are bombarded 24 hours a day with the doctrine, with the religious texts of this religion, the advertisements, buy this, buy that, have this, have that. Yet, many of them are depressed and they are committing suicide. 14-year-old girl hangs herself. Why? Because it seems her mother wouldn't let her watch TV. This is the curse of the consumer society. It is a curse. At this time, I'd like to take a question from the sister side. Sister? Assalamualaikum, brother. Well, this question is asked by Dr. Zarina Ansari. She is a professional radiologist. And the question is, in today's world, educated professionals are doing well and earning a good amount of money. How much of this can we spend on ourselves? For example, on clothes, food, accessories, etc. Without feeling guilty about it. That is what percent of it. All this while being a good Muslims. Thank you. Sister, thank you very much, Jazakallah Khair, for your fantastic and very important question. Now, I do want to make something very clear. There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong in Islam with enjoying the bounties and the blessings of Allah as long as you are grateful for them. So this is the first thing. If you have some nice clothes, or you have something nice and number one when you have it you thank Allah you say Alhamdulillah your heart is filled with happiness and praise for the one who has bestowed this thing on you that's the first thing secondly true gratitude to Allah means that you will not use this thing in a haram way the gratitude of your eyes to be grateful to Allah for your eyes is to look at only what is halal and not to look at what is haram. To be grateful to Allah for your ears is that you listen to what is good and beneficial, not to listen to what is bad and what is harmful. The gratitude of this tongue is that you speak what is good and what is right and you enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong, not that you backbite and slander and lie. If you do that, you are being ungrateful for your tongue and so on with all of your limbs and all of the things that Allah has provided you with. A man once came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, O oh Messenger of Allah, I don't like to see anybody with a pair of shoes and they are nice shoes, except I want to get a pair of shoes that are nicer than that. I don't like to see anyone with more nice shoes than me. He said, am I an arrogant person? Am I a proud person? You know what the Prophet said? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Allah is beautiful. And Allah loves that which is beautiful. Pride is rejecting the truth when it comes to you and looking down upon people, looking down upon people. This is pride. So there is nothing wrong with enjoying the good things in the life if number one, you are grateful. But sister, if you're feeling guilty, maybe that's the sign that you are really spending too much. Your heart is already telling you something, you see? I think there is a clue already, if you are feeling guilty, then maybe you have to ask yourself, am I spending too much on these things? Am I wasting? Because that is something is forbidden in Islam, to waste. Allah does not love those people who waste. And in fact, if we look, of course, at the consumer society, one of its defining characteristics is waste. How much waste is produced and how much is wasted. 
how much stuff is thrown away. We have one mobile phone, we have it for one year, but then the latest model comes out. Mine has a one megapixel camera, but oh my gosh, look, the latest one has a two megapixel camera. My life is not going to be the same unless I have a two megapixel camera. So then that's it. I get rid of this one and I get that, I, you know, like this waste, so much waste. And maybe here in India, you don't throw things away. In Europe, they just throw it and this and throw it away. Waste. This is not allowed. You see, so the problem is this, it is waste. So you should not be extravagant. You should not spend more than you have. You should not be wasteful and you should not use those things in a way that is haram. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to enjoy the good things of this life. But don't forget your portion in the hereafter. And don't forget to also be very generous in giving charity. Brothers and sisters, generally, sorry, I want to mention one important thing. I will ask you now, everybody please, to think about your life. And this is something I say to the kids, the English kids that come to visit us in the London Central Mosque in London. Alhamdulillah, in the London Central Mosque, the Regent's Park Mosque in London, we have 10,000 non-Muslim children come to visit us every year. MashaAllah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it that for five years now, I am the one who gets to talk to them most of the time. Alhamdulillah, they're very lucky, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, to see my beautiful face. And so, <laughs> no, I'm the lucky one. In reality, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me to do that. And one of the things I say to them, listen, kids, I say, think about what I've said. Think about your life. And I am sure if you think about your life, the thing that made you the most happy in your life is when you did something to help somebody in need. You know, you were in the playground and you saw someone being bullied and you stopped it. You saw an old lady and you helped her with her shopping across the road. You saw your mom was in difficulty and you helped her. You will find that doing that good deed brought you more happiness and satisfaction than your PlayStation and your TV and your Barbie doll and all of these things. And you know what? Most of them, they shake their heads and they agree. You see, brothers and sisters, really, if you want to have true happiness and to feel good, doing good deeds is one of the best ways of doing that. Helping others, helping human beings. And the Prophet wasallam said, the best of you, the best of you are those who are most useful and helpful and beneficial to others. And this is our deen. MashaAllah, to be beneficial to all the human beings and to be as helpful and to do as many good deeds as possible. So that is what I would encourage my professional brothers and sisters with. Allah has blessed you with money. Please do not forget to be very generous. And I'm sure you are in your sadaqah, and you're giving of charity and you're helping the poor and the needy people. And you will find that much more satisfying than the latest fashion dresses and bits of jewelry and so on and so forth. Okay. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalam. I'm a computer instructor. My question is that I heard a tape of Maulana Ibrahim Kasmi. He has posed that some Jewish people are entering into Islam to spread the misconception. What should we do to prevent it and how should we can justify that? Brother, I, you, you've taken me a little bit off balance because it's not really my topic here today. Um, so the best way to combat misconceptions against Islam in general is of course by ourselves as Muslims learning and understanding our religion. What I have found is the ignorance of Muslims about their own religion is astounding. I mean astounding. It is scary how ignorant Muslims are about their religion. And it's because of this ignorance there is an opportunity for these type of attacks to happen. We do not have, unfortunately, many scholars and students of knowledge amongst us anymore. When we have reached this stage, it is very easy for the attacks to happen. But to be honest, most of the countermeasures have to be really dealt with by the people who are specialists. 
like, for example, Dr. Zakir Naik. He is a great specialist in dealing with these type of attacks against Islam. And there are different brothers in different fields who are also specialists in different areas. So what you need to do is inshallah refer to them and usually that would be more beneficial than you know making your own studies from scratch. What you can do of course once you learn that stuff you can contribute and you can increase. For example, I will tell you about my own experience. In the days when, because I mean it's been mentioned that I go down to Speaker's Corner. I don't want you to all rush to London to Speaker's Corner hoping to see me there because you won't see me there. That's when I was 25 years old, I was young and I was strong and you know, I, I don't have the energy for that so much these days. But when I used to go down there, there was a Christian missionary who started throwing all of these ideas about the Quran that I never heard before. That the Quran, he was saying the Quran was written 300 years after the time of the Prophet. And then he started saying, and the proof is this and this. I didn't know what to say. And there was nothing, no one had done any research on this. So I had to do the research myself from the beginning. And it ended in a debate, Alhamdulillah, we dealt with it very well. But the ideas kept on going on. And they produced articles in something like the Atlantic Monthly, which is a very big magazine in North America. But myself, I could not continue with this work. But I set the ground. And mashallah, some brothers, they continued and they added and now their website, it's called Islam Answers, Islam Answers. This website now is even referred to by the academic orientalists. They even refer to it because they have been so good and so professional and so academic that even the non-Muslim academics, they refer to this website as a good place to see evidences of manuscripts and ancient inscriptions and these things that are refuting these ideas. So I think that's something that if you are interested in that, for example, you know, usually there is a limit to what Dr. Zaki can do personally or what I can do. And we do rely a lot of the time and people like us on others to contribute even it may be one small idea, but that small idea may be very important in a debate or a dialogue. So there is so much you can do, or you can yourself explore it, it is up to you. Yeah? Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Myself is Sheikh Hizar Hayat, software professional. I want to ask a question. There is capitalism or socialism or communism. So what is the way we should adopt or what you believe is the way we should adopt? And other comment is that likewise as situation here in India, uh, like we can say we have a capitalist uh, theory here. So I see around me like it is generating lot of employments and it is very easy for a common person like me to get employment and to arrange for bread and butter for me. So uh, is this really a curse? Like you told a face of coin and this is another face of coin. So how will you justify this? Courage it takes to stand up for what you believe in. Courage it takes to be true and righteous. Courage it takes to dare and answer. Your questions, be they social, political, economic, educational, or religious. To get clear and convincing answers. Test your courage and question me in there to ask. Dare to Ask, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum. Myself is Sheikh Hizar Hayat, software professional. I want to ask a question. There is capitalism or socialism or communism. So what is the way we should adopt or what you believe is the way we should adopt? And other comment is that likewise as situation here in India, uh, like we can say we have a capitalist uh, theory here. So I see around me like it is generating lot of employments and it is very easy for a common person like me to get employment and to arrange for bread and butter for me. So uh, is this really a curse? Like you told a face of coin and this is another face of coin. So how will you justify this? 
No, I think, brother, let's go back to what I was saying. I am not saying that no one will benefit in material terms from the consumer society. Of course, some people will benefit in material terms. And if you are a Muslim and you are following your religion, Alhamdulillah, and you are worshipping Allah, and you are doing your work in order to help you to earn money, to feed your family, to give charity, to give zakah, to make hajj, to make ibadah, to learn the religion, then you will get so much benefit from this personally. But my talk was about the ideology. You see, the ideology of the materialist society is leave religion. You don't need religion. Religion is not going to make you happy in life. What will make you happy in life? You think growing that beard is going to make you happy? Shave your beard, you'll get even more money. And why you, you know, why didn't you go out and have some fun and go to the disco and drink some alcohol and dance with the girls and watch the movies? Yes? Are you really, you following my brother, the consumed, the, the materialist society? I don't think so. No. No, you're not, are you? No, no. Okay, well, good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, but well, the point is, my, my discussion is about the philosophy, the ideology. Yes? Of course, some people can benefit from it. Yeah? As for your first question, from all of my studies, the more subhanallah I have studied the capitalism and the communism and the socialism. Actually, in some ways, of all the Western philosophies, a type of mixed economy that is partly capitalist and partly socialist seems to be the best solution. However, the more I have studied it, and I'm not an expert in economics, it is only recently that I have begun to realize how important the study of economics is. Very important. I was studying recently some books about what is going on in the world today. I began to realize, subhanAllah, it, it only makes you understand how Islam and the economic system and the social system that is given by God is really the perfect system. It is really the perfect balance between all the extremes in the human society. And so, but anyway, this is not really my topic exactly. And there will be another Sheikh coming who I think is going to be talking exactly about this topic of Islamic economics. And especially he's going to be emphasizing on the riba and interest-based system as a, uh, and versus that the Islamic system and which is better. So I think that will be a very interesting lecture. It's not my speciality. So that's his speciality. And I think it will be very interesting to come and listen to that insha'Allah ta'ala. So jazakallah khair for your very nice question. Thank you very much, brother. Jazakallah. I'll take a question from the gentleman in the front, please. Sir, I have not come here to question you, but to support your lecture. And I want to tell all the public that if they follow your lecture, they will be more happy. Your happiness is a product of mind. It is not a product of what main purpose was. Once I was thinking, why the Fabi Ayyu Allah Zibaan has come 30, 20 times in Surah Rahman. Okay, Allah says, Can I give you the bounties and why you refuse? So my question is, your main question people misunderstood. Now, what is the most important? If you don't get for five minutes, you will die. A, it costs nothing. Second, water. If you don't get for nine days, you will die. So Allah says the most important thing required to live life is not money. The things which are required, I have given you to love. The same thing what I wanted to tell the public, that wealth is important. But wealth must be used for, because Hazrat Khatija was the richest woman of Arabia. Prophet did not marry because she was richest. Mm. What I want to tell you, the happiness is the product of mind, and that's why Allah gives you all the things. But I tell you, the, in, scientists know a simple water is any time better than Coca-Cola, which costs 10 rupees. I never take Coca-Cola. There are so many other things I can give examples. Do you, all the people know. But what most important, the most essential things required for the life are free, according to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Dr. Naik. And now we'll go to the sister section. Assalamu alaikum. 
this is masum i am science student i want to ask this question that if a person only prays but does not provide for his children is he good muslim well sister you know uh, to tell you the truth i will, i i refuse to comment uh, to make a statement about the problem with that is that usually when someone is asked i'm not accusing you of anything or saying this is the case with you but sometimes when someone like me is asked a question like that is often used in a way that is you know to use it against someone and so you know you have to really know the full story about any particular individual what i would have to do is say okay what do i know about this individual why is this individual praying and not providing for the children why are they relying upon others in order to feed the children what is the reason for that you see now maybe this person for example is involved in dawa if this person is involved in dawa for example i will give you a hadith and i will mention something that someone came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he complained to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said my brother sits in the masjid and he spends all of his time listening and praying and listening to you and learning from you and i am working so hard and it is me that is providing for him and he is spending all of the time listening and learning and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said maybe it is that allah provides for you because of what you do for him yes maybe it is that allah provides for you because of what you do for him so i don't know the circumstance if he is just praying and making no effort to earn money while he is perfectly capable of this then there is no doubt that in islam this is absolutely wrong in fact the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hated to see any able bodied man who was capable of earning money that he should not do that and that he should beg no the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not allow someone who was capable of earning money to beg for money and this is not something we like to do in islam also i want to go back to what sheikh abdul karim said he mentioned that uh, about the wealth it is very important to understand money itself is not evil money itself is not bad it is what you do with it and how you use it that is important and i am re-emphasizing the importance of my talk is today the consumerism is presented to us as a type of religion by following this consumer society and consumer pattern they teach us this is the way to be happy i am saying no it doesn't make you happy what makes you truly happy is following islam and being a muslim but part of being a good muslim is to earn a halal livelihood and to work for your livelihood this is part of what islam is teaching okay so islam is not a religion of monasticism islam is not a religion that says we go and we sit in a monastery or we sit in a certain place and that's it and we just worship and we don't live in the world no that is not the teaching of islam in the religion of islam we worship allah we follow the quran we follow the teachings of islam and we live in this world and we work in this world alhamdulillah jazakallah khair brothers and sisters thank you very much it's been a real pleasure talking to you today assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is narrated 
on the authority of Abu Zar, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, said, Three are the persons with whom Allah would neither speak on the day of resurrection, nor would look at them, nor would absolve them, and there is a painful chastisement for them. The Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, repeated it three times. Abu Zar, may Allah be pleased with him, remarked, They failed and they lost. Who are these persons, Messenger of Allah? Upon this he, the Holy Prophet, said, They are the dragger of lower garment, the one who reminds others of his gifts, and the seller of goods by false oath. Sahih Muslim, Volume 1, Book of Faith, Hadith Number 192. hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000 Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem that are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The opportunity to ask. But even if you agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died? The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument to be wrong. Let's meet Dr. Zakir tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast.